All right, all praises to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutation to the I keep pushing this word in truth and sincerity. Brother, send me some articles and I come across this one. I like this one. This one uh, tickled my fancy, as they say. Uh, it says here Mystery adversaries jamming US gunships and disrupting communications in Syria. General. Okay. That's one of them US um, A-10s or what they're called, AC-130 gunship. Okay, and it says here, The US has experienced aggressive electronic warfare from its adversaries in Syria, a top US general said, while media pointed finger at Russia. It denied involvement, saying it has better things to do than to harass US aircraft. The claim was made Tuesday by the head of the U.S. Special Operations Command, SOCOM. Army General Tony Thomas. The daily interference in Syria disrupts U.S. military communications and hampers aircraft missions, the general told the U.S. Uh, Geoskeptic Intelligence uh, Foundations, 2018. Geoint Symbios. Can't pronounce that fucking word. Right now in Syria, we're in the most aggressive EW electronic warfare environment on the planet. From our adversaries, Thomas said, they're testing US every day, knocking out communications down, knocking our communications down, disabling our AC 130s etc. Uh, some reports suggest that Thomas was referring to the EC-130H Compass Call. Uh, the EC-130H is an aircraft especially designed to counter and wage its own electronic warfare. So their electronic warfare plane is getting electronic war getting electronically warfared. <laughs> that's, that's good, isn't it? And it, and if the machines were rendered inoperable by some adversaries on their own field, it would have been quite an embarrassing revelation, because there is a story I remember, how that one Russian plane flew around um, an American destroyer and rendered it useless. They had to tow it back to um, the port and use it as scrap iron. Because it fried its electrics. So, America's come up against a, a, an advanced adversary. They're not playing with um, uh, Iraq, Saddam Hussein. Never had this technology. So, where's Saddam Hussein now? He's in a box. Gaddafi never had this technology. Where's Gaddafi now? In a box. They're coming up against the Russians who sacrificed themselves to, to for their for their, their weapons program. I remember hearing on the news a long time ago how Russia had to line up for loaves of bread and stuff like that because what they was doing, they was beating their plowshares into weapons. They had to sacrifice their um they sacrificed to build their weaponry up. And it's a beautiful thing because the most I said that man, that you know, that prepare for war, beat your plowshares into into beat your pruning hooks into swords, yeah. Right, and it says, uh, no plans to leave Moscow says U.S. have settled in Syria, contrary to terrorist defeat promise. Okay, because uh, U.S. proclaimed that if they defeat the terrorists, there was no use for them to be there. But this ain't about terrorists because they were back in the terrorists we know that okay the well the people in the know know the u.s was um using the proxy army okay and it says um footage of his speech however clearly shows that thomas was talking about the ac-30 close air support cas gunships which fall under sitcom command while the general did not point fingers at anyone 
the media which reported on his remarks implied even explicitly claimed that Russia were behind the electronic interference. And I, I, I reckon they were. Because, like I said, they rendered a US destroyer useless, man. All right, and it said US Secretary... Uh, U.S. Secretary of Defense James Mattis weighed in on Thursday stating that he was not ready to pin the blame for the electronic interference in Syria on Russia. Apart from Moscow, Syrian government forces and Iranian servicemen are also present in the country and officials told the State Armed Services Committee on Thursday. Moscow firmly has firmly rejected allegations of its involvement. Russia has other things to do in Syria and tamper with your gunship, with U.S. gunships. Deputy head of the Federation Defense Committee, Senator uh, Yevgeny Serebrennikov stated, namely helping Syrians to achieve and maintain peaceful life. I don't know who they are calling adversaries exactly, but Russia has nothing to do with it, and all the allegations are unsubstantiated, the official said. So, um, America's come up against the met their match, basically, you know. And it ain't going to be like a foregone conclusion, like they usually have it. The ball is in their court, as they say. No. Russia's going to bat it back. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So, I'm going to leave it at that. And say all praises to Yahawa by Shim of Mashiach Yahawashai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And salutation to the Akim pushing this word in truth and sincerity. And we're nearly out of here, brothers. Kwame Asherala. Frighten the USS Donald Cook so much in the Black Sea from November 8th. This incident happened in April. It's finally just making it to our media. The State Department acknowledged that the crew of the destroyer USS Donald Cook has been gravely demoralized ever since their vessel was flown over in the Black Sea by a Russian Su-24 fighter jet which carried neither bombs nor missiles but only an electronic warfare device. On April 10th, 2014, the USS Donald Cook entered the waters of the Black Sea, and on April 12th, a Russian Su-24 tactical bomber flew over the vessel, triggering an incident that, according to several media reports, completely demoralized its crew, so much so that the Pentagon issued a protest. The USS Donald Cook is a fourth-generation guided missile destroyer whose key weapons are Tomahawk cruise missiles with a range up to 2,500 kilometers capable of carrying nuclear explosives. The ship carries 56 Tomahawk missiles in standard mode and 96 missiles in attack mode. The U.S. destroyer is equipped with the most recent Aegis combat system. It is an integrated naval weapons system which can link together the missile defense systems of all vessels embedded within the same network so as to ensure the detection, tracking, and destruction of hundreds of targets at the same time. In addition, the USS Donald Cook is equipped with four large radars whose power is comparable to that of several stations. For protection, it carries more than 50 anti-aircraft missiles of various types. Meanwhile, the Russian Su-24 that buzzed the USS Donald Cook carried neither bombs nor missiles, but only a basket mounted under the fuselage, which according to the Russian newspaper Rosyaka Gazeta, contained a Russian electronic warfare device called Kibini. As the Russian jet approached the U.S. vessel, the electronic device disabled all radars, control circuits, systems, information transmission, etc. on board the U.S. destroyer. In other words, the all-powerful Aegis system, now hooked up or about to be, with the defense systems installed on NATO's most modern ships, was shut down as turning off the TV set with a remote control. The Russian Su-24 then simulated a missile attack against the USS Donald Cook, which was left literally deaf and blind, as if carrying out a training exercise, the Russian aircraft, unarmed, 
repeated the same maneuver 12 times before flying away. <clears throat> After that, the fourth generation destroyer immediately set sail toward a port in Romania. Since that incident, which the American media have carefully covered up despite the widespread reaction sparked among defense industry experts, no U.S. ship has ever approached Russian territorial waters again. <clears throat> According to some specialized media, 27 sailors from the USS Thanokuk requested to be relieved from active service. Vladimir Bollybean, director of the Research Center on Electronic Warfare and the Evaluation of So-Called Visibility Reduction Techniques, attached to the Russian Air Force Academy, made the following comment. The more the radio electronic system is complex, the easier it is to disable it through the use of electronic warfare. So I did a search for Kabini over here at Deagle, and sure enough, Russian Air Force Kabini is an advanced aircraft, aircraft mounted electronic warfare system capable of jamming state of the art air defense radar systems. The Kabini jamming was tested successfully for some time on the ground in Buritaya, Russian Federation. On April 17, 2014, two Russian Air Force Su-24 bombers with no weapons loaded were sent to intercept the U.S. Navy's Aegis-equipped destroyer USS Donald Cook in the Black Sea. One of them, I should say, flew around the destroyer up to 12 times while the other one remained away, as done usually by both sides during the Cold War period. Unconfirmed reports suggest that the Su-24s were equipped with the Kabini EW system and were able to neutralize the Aegis phased array radar target tracking capabilities while the ship's crew was unable to reboot the system. It is not clear whether the jammer affected the radar system itself or only the computer-based component or either both at the, t at the same time. The Russian Air Force plans call for the installation of the Kabini jammer on all its advanced jets. And then I came across this article which was translated from Russian. This, so it's going to be a little awkward. U.S. destroyer Donald Cook with cruise missiles Tomahawk entered the neutral waters of the Black Sea on April 10th. The purpose was a demonstration of force and intimidation in connection with the position of Russia in Ukraine and Crimea. The appearance of American warships in these waters is in contradiction of the Montreux Convention about the nature and duration of stay in the Black Sea by the military ships of countries not washed by the sea. Not bordered, I guess it means. And I think this is why they're sending... Uh, equipment now to the Gulf of Mexico is because we're starting to mess with the Black Sea, so they're going to mess with the Gulf of Mexico. In response, Russia sent an unarmed bomber Su-24 to fly around the U.S. destroyer. However, experts say this plane was equipped with the latest Russian electronic warfare complex. According to this version, Aegis spotted from afar the approaching aircraft and sounded alarm. Everything went normally. American radars calculated the speed of the approaching target, and suddenly all the screens went blank. Idris was not working anymore, and the rockets could not get target information. Meanwhile, Su-24 flew over the deck of the destroyer, did battle turn, and simulated missile attack on the target. Then it turned and repeated the maneuver, and did so 12 The demonstration was original enough. A bomber without any weapons, but having on board equipment for jamming an enemy radar, worked against a destroyer equipped with Aegis, the most modern system of air and missile defense. But this system of mobile location, in this case the ship, has a significant drawback. That is, the target tracking capabilities. They work well when there is a number of these ships which can coordinate with each other somehow. In this case there was just one destroyer, and apparently the algorithm of the radar and the Aegis system on the destroyer did not load under the influence of jamming by the Su-24. It was therefore not only a nervous reaction to the fact of flying around by the Russian bomber, which was common practice during the Cold War. The reaction of the Americans was due to the fact that the most modern system, especially its informative or radar part, did not work adequately. Therefore there was such a nervous reaction to the whole episode. The system which the Russian Su-24 shocked the American destroyer Donald Cook has the code name Kibini. This is the name of the mountain range on the Kuala Peninsula in the Arctic Circle. Kibini is the newest complex for radio-electronic jamming of the enemy. They will be installed on all Russian and on all advanced Russian planes. Recently, the complex has undergone regular testing exercising on the ground in Buryataya, 
Apparently the tests which were conducted under conditions as close to real as possible were successful. So they tested it there, it worked. They tested it against Aegis and it worked. And it's a wonder why people in America have not heard anything about this. It doesn't fit our narrative of being the most dominant, awesome, kick-ass military on the planet. And with that guy, the quote that guy said before, the more advanced it is, the easier it is to take it down. So, back to the drawing board, America. All right, look at the guy to port. Look at the left one. He is on the deck. On the deck, below the bridge wing. <laughs> over the bow, right turn, over the bow. Like you may come across the uh, flight deck coming in low, bridge wing level. Bridge wing level. Below the bridge wing. Below the bridge wing.